Oh, uh, he's not going to fire shots at Oxcart Man, is he? No. No. No! Yes. We built this city on wool and brooms. Hello everyone, you're watching YouTube. I'm Isaac and this is 10,000 Pretty Good Books, the channel for parents who want to help their small children develop good taste in reading. And it's time for a review of Oxcart Man, written by Donald Hall, illustrated by Barbara Cooney, and published by Viking Press in 1979. The story begins in October, as a farmer loads up his ox-drawn cart with two kinds of things everything that he and his family have made over the course of the year, and everything left over from what they have grown all year to sustain themselves. He then says goodbye to his wife, son, and daughter, and walks at the head of his ox for 10 days through the beautiful New England countryside until he arrives at Portsmouth Market. There he sells everything that he brought, and then everything that contained everything that he brought, and then the cart itself, and then finally he sells his ox, which is a very touching moment and then the ox's yoke and harness. Then he buys a few things for the family that will either improve their lives very slightly or help them make items slightly more efficiently to, to sell next year. Then he walks back home and he and his family begin their work all over again with each season bringing its new tasks and the story ends in May with the geese dropping their feathers. Before I get to my commentary, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. What if I say something inflammatory that you should correct me about in the comments but you miss it because you're not subscribed? Okay, back to the review. Man, this one's a classic. It's a Caldecott medal winner. It started out as a poem by Donald Hall, which he based on a story that he heard from a cousin who said that he heard it when he was a boy from an old man who himself heard it as a boy from an old man. One of the valuable things about this book is that it can serve as a kind of antidote to some serious cultural ignorance in our children. I remember conversations with students I've taught in the past who truly did not understand that the bag of chips and the energy bar that they bought at the corner gas station was not food, was not a meal, was not lunch. Some knowledge of how food gets produced, or used to get produced, I guess, is important for children who are accustomed to getting food at the grocery store. It's also great that everyone, husband, wife, son, and daughter, all contribute in productive and useful ways to the household's small economy. It's good for kids to see that the chores and creative work of children of the past was part of a larger whole. And it's lovely that all of the work of the Oxcart man's family takes the raw matter of the world around them and transforms it into something more than what it was by itself. Like yarn into a shawl or wood into shingles. They are also frugal careful to make use of everything and only taking to market what they don't need. The whole book's a loving tribute to the nobility of a self-sufficient agrarian life. The best thing of all about this book is Barbara Cooney's illustrations. They are simple, but graceful, done in a way that's evocative of the paint on wood style of New England artists at the time. Reminds me a little bit of those uh, Charles Wysocki Americana paintings that they use for those thousand piece puzzles. Which brings me to the second best picture in this book, which was pretty hard to pick in this one because there are so many good ones. In this image, Oxcart Man is in the middle of the market hustle. I love the framing of the red brick around all the happy customers. You got a fellow with a sack of potatoes. You got the lady with the basket of turnips. You've got kids with new mittens as the winter's coming up. You've got uh, ox cart man selling the shawl that his wife made. Hopefully that kid's going to pay for that apple that he's taking out of the barrel. Look at that guy with the broom. He's my favorite. He looks like he got a great deal on that broom. Look at his face. He's like, yes, I can finally sweep out my place. That's the second best picture. If you want to see the best one, you're going to have to pick up a copy. I said that the story ended in May, but it, it doesn't really end then, of course, because the implication is that the busy season of spring is not yet over. 
the busy season of summer is ahead, and the harvesting of fall must be done before the next trip in October next year. The poetic details about the passage of time into the future are very, very good. The ox cart man brings back a kettle, which will bring greater ease to the cooking uh, and feeding of the family. He brings back an embroidery needle, which means that the previously purely functional work can now be decorated beautifully. He brings back a knife for his son, who previously carved his brooms using a borrowed kitchen knife. This all implies that life for the ox cart man and his children and their children will improve incrementally but endlessly. And I have some extra thoughts about this book. Has the man no sense of decorum? Oh, uh, he's not going to fire shots at Oxcart Man, is he? No. 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 Yes. Oh, this is why I was putting off this review. I have to thank one of my colleagues for this insight. Oxcart Man never goes to church. Barbara Cooney depicts churches, I think, three times in her illustrations, but the life of this colonial family contains no depiction whatsoever of any kind of participation in worship or even the holidays of the most basic liturgical calendar. I know certain holidays like Christmas were not yet being celebrated in a festive way in New England in this time period, but nothing? No parties, no feast days, no holidays of any kind, especially in a book for children. If your children go on to receive some kind of a classical education in high school or attend a liberal arts college, they're going to encounter the thought of Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Oxcart Man is a pretty solid depiction of what Rousseau calls the happiest and most durable and best state of man. After he has emerged from the non-political state of nature and formed the most basic social group, the family, but before he has entered into society, which Rousseau believes corrupts. Look what else is missing from the book. Oxcart Man's family has no community. The transactions in Portsmouth don't count. Those people aren't coming over with a meal when the baby is born. They aren't helping Oxcart Man fix his barn door. Okay, so what's the problem? Lots of kids' books don't have any reference to religion at all, so what's the issue here? Well, because the very presentation of this family's way of living in the poetry and the illustration is not only making it attractive, but holding it up as a kind of ideal vision of life. This book makes this bygone time of peaceful productivity look desirable, which it is. But that's why I feel allowed to complain that the vision is incomplete without transcendence. That transcendence is not found in some distant future in which we reach humankind's ultimate perfectibility, but in the liturgical sublimation of cyclical time right now, in the turning and returning of the feasts and the holidays and the Sabbaths. Leave that out, and what you have is the depiction of a set of truly good things that don't exist for anything other other than their own self-perpetuation. What's the meaning of life in Oxcart Man? Work. Work gives life meaning. The endless recurrence of labor. The grind from which there is no escape. And if you go check out the original poem by Donald Hall, you will see the bleakness of those themes presented much more clearly. As beautiful as the vision of life presented in this book is, it is straight out of enlightenment thinking. Not even God demanded that we work every day. Just six out of seven. That's a pretty accurate and healthy and natural proportion of labor to leisure, even if you're not religious. But Oxcart Man's life is not ordered toward any transcendent reality. In fact, the world of Oxcart Man is not a world in which the writing and illustrating of a book like Oxcart Man is desirable or possible. Dare I say this book negates its own reason for existing. I'm, I'm being a little unfair. I, re I really actually like this book. This book is beloved for a reason. The beauty it holds for all ages outweighs the flaw that will only make sense to adults and older children anyway. I do recommend owning this book and engaging your children in conversation about it. Like and subscribe, but more important, if you know young parents of small children on the hunt for pretty good books, share this video with them. Studies show that my subscribers on average are much better looking than non-subscribers. If you remember reading Oxcart Man yourself or you're just excited to check it out, then let me know in the comments and also let me know what should I review next. See you next time. Hi. Hi. <laughs>